This would be Thursday, September 9th, as we're going to get into and find out more. Actually, more. We're going to start grammar and just a little bit with uh, uh, similes and metaphors when we get to memorize. Those of you who are playing the home version, you're going to be putting the entry into your table of contents with the information behind me. Once again, you can pause it, boop, uh, and then you can write down that information and then unpause it, boop, um, and then you'll be good to go. Uh, are you waving at me, Isaac? No, question. Yes. Did you say September 9th? Maybe. <laughs> this, what's important is that there's no physical evidence that you could ever use to prove that. So, uh, those of you who are playing the home game right now, who just got done rewinding it, like, I think he said September 9th. And so he probably just went back to go check, paid no attention to that. It was a, a mistake on the video. Uh, you are going to download this into Notability. Uh, so in your Notability, you're going to create uh, a new thing that's going to be called Grammar. And you're going to go to my website, and then you're going to go here, and then here, and then download this. And then you're going to bring that up in Notability, because we're going to be writing on it and doing notes today. If you don't have that, then you can just uh, go to that same spot, and then just use this thing called printing it. Uh, and then you have to just write on it with pen and paper and stuff like that. Uh, but for the rest of us, we're going to do it all digitally and make it fancy. Boom! And then we're going to go to here. Um, and then for the bell work, is what you're going to have to write down where it says memory poem, you're going to write down all of this because we're going to be rememorizing it and then going over and talking about it here in a moment. All right. For those of you who are up to this point and you have this copy down, those of you at home are probably in the process of copying it down. Go you. Um, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to repeat this a couple times uh, and then we're going to practice it without the screen on. What we're going to do is called the zombie choir. Because uh, the zombie choir, you repeat it with me, and you all sound like zombies because you're horrible children, and you just go, and zombies can sing, this is exactly what it would sound like. I will go through it and demonstrate it, and then you're going to zombie choir with me. So it goes, stay. for the simile, like or as, you shall see, and you're going to point to the audience, because in similes, what two words we have to use? Like or as. So you're going to say, for the simile, like or as, you shall see, because you're going to see them. But with the metaphor, use them no more. You're going to wave your hands back and forth. Not this way, not like you just don't care. Uh, you're, going to put a, you're going to say, use them no more, because you don't use like or as with metaphors. You're like, no, child, don't do it. And so you're going to try and get them to not make the poor choice. And then finally, to help you remember, the comparing of two... So you throw up the two fingers, and you whisper nouns. And that's because I want my rhyme scheme of two and do. Uh, it would be two nouns is what you will do. Nouns doesn't really work. So the comparing of two nouns is what you will do. And you come back to pointing. Pointing like that. That's it. Um, and then eventually, starting tomorrow, you're going to be standing up and repeating it on your own. And it gets you five B points if you can say it without any help. If you need help, you just get fewer points. If you need a lot of help, you get no points. But each one of you will eventually be standing up and saying it and going through it. Plus, if you teach it to a globetrotter or star, and you have them come up to me and have them tell it to me, it gets you five more B points. Plus, it gets them a shiny monkey treat. So you go, do you want a monkey treat? And they're like, whoa, yay! And then you teach them this, and then they come up to me in the hallway, and they can say it, and they tell me who taught it to them. You get the five B points, they get a monkey treat. How many times can we do it? As many times as you have friends. For some of you, <laughs> once. For others of you, three and four times. It just sort of depends on the people like, you're annoying, and they stop hanging out with you. Then you're going to run out of people that you can do it with. Um, and so that's completely up to you. When can you start doing it? As soon as we get done memorizing it here in just a moment. All right. We're going to do it together. Bouncing stick version. I'll point to the words as we go through. Don't be the annoying child that goes off on your own. For the summer, like grad, you shine with my bumper. And then try to go fast because I'll have to take the stick and then just throw it jabby like that. <laughs> and then this solves the problem every time. You're volunteering for a throat jab? No. Oh, yes, Carla. What if two people tell it to someone at the same time? Then they split the points. Yeah, you, know, you can't have like the whole class taught this one person. We all get five points. No, you all divide five by twenty something, which comes out to be no points. So I would not recommend it. You would be if you and a friend both teach it to someone, you either split the points or you distract your friend while you bring that kid here. Uh, so, 
you go to the bathroom. I'll just go talk to him. <laughs> like that. And so, you know, because you're a horrible person. All right. So with me we have four. This is where you say it out loud. For the simile, like or as you shall see. Pointing with fingers. Good job. And then? But with the metaphor, you said no more. Comparing the two is what you will do. Nicely done. Perfect little zombie choir. I'm so proud of you. All right, we'll do it again here in just a moment. Where uh, I'm not going to do a bouncy thing through the screen, and we'll try it again, and we'll try it one more time. This shouldn't be that hard to stay in your head, but we'll find out. So once again, we have. That's so cheesy. I know. Just doing it makes you taste like cheddar. Uh, but it's good for you overall. Uh, you can go ahead and put the notebook away. We're going to be done with that for now. Um, and we're going to be doing the writing of the notes in there. As we go through and do the notes, you can either uh, do the one where you, you type it in, tapity, 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 or where you hand write it in, depending on which what version of notability you want to do. You either have tappy tap version or righty write version, and either one works for me. All right, grammar. That's what magic lens is. We're going to introduce you to grammar. Mr. Brody, I already know about grammar. Then you'll be fine. Especially because we get to introduce a little bit of impact learning today with grammar. But yes. you, you should be fine because you know all about it. It's all about nouns and verbs and stuff like that. So what is grammar? This is what grammar is. And apparently if I write it a bunch of times, it makes it more exciting. Uh, grammar is a way of looking at language. Grammar is a way of thinking about language. So in that spot where it says, what is grammar, you're going to put down a way of thinking about language. This magic lens thing that you're filling in now, you will be holding on to it and using it through high school. They use it next year in eighth grade. They're going to be using it in your freshman, sophomore, junior, senior years. You'll come back and use this. So if you keep this notability file and you keep all this stuff in there, you get to come back and keep using it over and over and over again. Unless, of course, you just delete it. The next year, they're going to make you do it all over again. And the year after that, they're going to do it all over again. But if you save your stuff, be like, wee, I don't have to do it again. Make your life a little bit easier. This will be showing up for us every week. We'll be doing bell works. It'll be on quizzes and stuff like that. For the most part, it's pretty easy. It's just, what are nouns? Verbs, adjectives, adverbs. Mr. Bobiak, I don't know any of those. Then I'll teach you. Um, these are the different levels. We're going to be starting at the simple one for now, the eight parts of speech. So we're going to be doing this one. The other ones are more for eighth grade. We're just not there yet. And so we're going to be focusing on just this part up here. The parts of speech, these are the parts of speech that we're going to be beating into. So the parts of speech... The nouns, the adjectives, the adverbs, uh, uh, conjunctions, prepositions, interjections. You don't have to write this part down. It's just right in front of you where it says parts of speech on your notes. You could just circle it, but these are awesome um, if you wanted to, or just leave it alone. I'm happy either way. So these are the parts of speech that we're going to be getting into. Let's begin. For each of these things, you're going to have to write down the definition, and then you're going to write down the job of it. And then I'm going to give you little examples to go along with it. Haley? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Say definition. Oh, uh, you know what the definition of a noun is? A person, place, or thing. Boom! Goes the dynamite. You are correct. A noun! Definition is it's a person, it's a place, it's a thing. Person, place, thing. So on, on there where it says definition, it's got the three spots. You put down person, place, thing. That's actually in alphabetical order, too. Person, place, thing. Mind blown. And then we're going to go to the job. And there's two jobs a noun has in every sentence. It is either subject or object. 
I'm going to add a little something to the side of this. I just thought of it to make it a little easier. So it's inside of where it says the job. Let's see if I can get this to show up. Let's make magic happen. Or we're just set this magic. Let's just like this. There. Back down. No. There. Yes. There. This will make your life easier. So right next to the subject. Does the action? The little object receives action. Mr. Broviak smacked the child. Mr. Broviak is the subject. It does the action. Child, object, received the action. So the subject is the doer. The object is the receiver. The bear ate my arm. Bear, subject, arm, object. Okay. Now that you've learned that, we're going to see how well it impacts your learning. Because <laughs> nothing helps learning like stress. Boom. Our first sentence, Mr. Brobiak threw. So for this first sentence, Decauden, see if you can figure out what our noun is. We only have one. You have a 50-50 chance. In that sentence, Mr. Robiak threw. What's the noun? Mr. Robiak. Are you sure? Good job. You're not done yet. Now I know. Now you have to figure out, is it a subject or object? Is it doing the action or receiving the action? Doing the action. So is it going to be a subject or object? Look at you, look at you. You used your notes. I'm so proud of you. It is correct. That's a subject. At any time, you're welcome to look down and use the notes. That's why you have them. So that's why it makes me all proud and tingly. So don't ever feel like, ah, ah I'm going to look down. Perfect. Please do. It's almost like writing it down helps you. That's crazy, Mr. Broviak. I agree. Mr. Broviak threw the bear. What? <laughs> Maggie. Now, one of these she already helped you out with. What's our first noun? Go you. And do we have any other nouns? The bear. We do. It's correct. And there's a person at the door. Cammy, she's alive. Welcome, dear. Go ahead and put the paper on my desk over there. Okay. All right, and then um, we're going to have to give you. There's a whole bunch of stuff we did, but you're going to have to come back and do it later. Uh, I can't go back to that screen, so we'll give you this. We're writing stuff down for now. There's a bell work. You're going to have to go back and watch the class because now it's at the end. But we're glad you're alive. But you're going to miss all the other stuff we did. Now, back to picking on Maggie. Maggie, you said bear is the other one? Mm -hmm. Good job. Now we're going to figure out subject and object for each one. All right? So Mr. Broviak, is that the subject or object? Is it doing it or receiving it? Um, subject. Subject. Good job. Bear, is it doing the action or is it receiving the action? Object. Is correct because it is the one being thrown. Mr. Bobriak threw the bear at the student. We'll go ahead and jump to that one. Haley? What? Hi. Hi. You're brave in your heart. What's our first noun again? Mr. Bobriak. Good. Next noun? Bear. And we have any other nouns? Bear. Good job. What's our subject? The... Are you asking me? Mr. Bobriak. Is correct. And bear is a? Good. And student is? Is correct. Student and object also because it's receiving the action of the, the bear being thrown at it. All right. Now, let's bump it up to a tougher one. Mr. Baker taught the students some crazy brand new math concepts. Mr. Bobby, that looks like a tough one. It is, but don't worry. It's going to get even tougher here in a moment again beyond that one. Megan! You ready? Good. Me too. What's our first noun? Good. Any other nouns? Student. Good. 
Any other nouns? No. No other nouns? No. We're good there. No other nouns. I guess we're all right, good. It is incorrect. There's definitely a noun. I'm trying to give you a chance. I'm okay with that. So we have one more noun in there. Can anyone help? I know it. Yes? Math. Math. Math? You, you get the sure. ultimate decision. Yes. No, it's not. Carly says not math. No, it's not. You can't cover your ears unless you know the answer. If they're right, then you're good. Is math now is math a noun here? Yes. yes. It's a thing. Also not math. Are you for real? <laughs> for real, math is an adjective because math is describing something. What's math describing? It's not spoken. Concepts. What kind of concepts? Math concepts. In this one, we have one subject. Megan, which of those nouns is the subject that's doing the action? Good job. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Katy Perry danced and sang on stage while her backup singer sprayed the audience with cotton candy. Kendra, I know there's so many. Now, to help you out, all you have to do is find the nouns and then find the one that you think is the subject. Okay. What's our first noun? Good. Next noun? Stage. I don't know how you got that one. Next one? Um, audience. Audience is the next one, correct? There's another one between those? Um. <laughs> it was so long, I very just asked that. Just so. No, singers. Backup singers. Here you go. Singers? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. And then the next one is? Audience. You sure? Yes. Any others? Good. Good job. One more, Kendra. What's the subject? Oh, good job. Go you. Simple as that. Finding the nouns and figuring out which one is the subject. Mr. Toby, I thought it was easy. Well, then let's go to professional nouns. Okay. Professional nouns. Nouns that have lost their amateur status are now known as pronouns. So a pronoun takes the place of person, place, or thing. Definition takes the place of, and then below that you put person, place, or thing. And then we're going to be writing examples in a moment. Because there's only a certain limited number of them, it'll make it easier if you know all of them. So pronouns takes the place of person, place, thing. What were the two jobs of a noun? John? Um, subject and object. Same thing for a pronoun. Can we cut and paste? If you can figure it out, more power to you. It's the same thing again. It's just subject, object. Simple as that. Job <coughs> of a pronoun, same thing as a noun. Either you're going to be a subject or an object. Examples. What? Hoogly jubly? Where did I? Oh, I put those down there. So, we'll, all right, let's do this. Right. Let's write down examples. I thought I did the last one, but apparently it got eaten and disappeared. So, somewhere to the side, let's have you write down pronouns. Examples. And there's only so many that you can have, and being able to see them will make your life much easier. You guys know examples of pronouns? No, no. Give me one. He. Good. Next one? She. Good. Blue. Say blue? <laughs> that's an adjective. <laughs> name. <laughs> what? Name. Name? Yeah. No. Uh, Her. Kevin. He. Pizza. He. Him. 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 It, they, they, pizza. them, popcorn, not popcorn, us, us. Chicken. Uh, there's one that starts with W, 
Oui, oui. Wendy. Oui. <laughs> Not women. He, she, her, him, it, they, Wendy. them, us, we, I. It. No, that's a verb. <laughs> Words. Bigger again. That was too bad. That's good. My tongue's so confused. Those are the examples. Those are the only pronouns that exist. So if you write those down, you'll always know what your pronouns are. So anytime you're going through there, you can just have those and then take a look at them and it makes your life easier. Do you have to write those down? Heck no, don't write them down. It makes things much fun for me. Much more fun? It's much more funner. Much more funner for me. Then, then it has an impact on everyone. We're like, I don't remember what they were. I'm like, I don't either. I'm pretty sure it was popcorn and women. When? <laughs> Wendy's? Yeah, we were popcorn women and Wendy's. Best pronouns ever. Yes. <laughs> right. In a moment, we're going to go back and do the impact learning. No. See how, yeah, that's what you Yay. say. Yay! No. And, and see how well, you, as long as you have them written down, you should be fine. So much learning. I know, it's the impact All right. You guys have those down? Oh, yes. <laughs> he, she, her, him, it, they, them, us, we, I. He, she, It's like the lyrics to a fun I song. It. Okay. Him, us, we, I. There we go. When the chipmunk finishes the race, he will go there tomorrow. So in this one, uh, Anthony, what is our pronoun? List. He's using the notes. I don't have faith in him. I do. I don't. I don't. He's gonna figure it out here in just a moment. What? Me. Is correct. Good job, Anthony. Woo! Woo! Tomorrow we don't finish notes. We'll do that on Tuesday. What's going on tomorrow? Simples and metaphors quiz. Quiz. And you get to start saying the poem.